Welcome back to Crowd Control. Today we're going to be talking, as always, about a bunch of crowdfunding yeah. campaigns. Uh, not many that are coming up. We have one to talk about that's coming yeah, up. Yeah, we've got, but there's a few. Last week we talked a little bit about what was coming up, but yeah. we missed some of the stuff that was actually running. So there's some things that are running right now. These are games that are doing fairly well, or games that we think um, deserve a bigger audience that we wanted to talk about. And the first one that really caught my eye that I want to talk about was Guilty Gear Strive. Yeah. And this caught my eye for a couple of reasons. For one, I'm a huge fan of Guilty Gear. If you don't know, that is a... Have two... you played much Guilty Gear? Oh, I've Gear? played so much really? Guilty Gear. It's I kind love of a it. hardcore fighting game. It's very hardcore fighting We're very talking about the video game, game, by the way. Uh, it is like an anime style. It's really cool character designs. And it's one of those fighting games that just everything you do feels epic. Like, you're just like... You're doing crazy moves. Well, and I think the competitive uh, scene really embraced oh, that. They really the did. Day. I did not... I've never played it competitively at all. I go online to play and I just get, get destroyed. But... <laughs> Uh, they've adapted that using what the the succeed system, and this is level ninety nine who has done a lot of like similar games, similar games or like video game adjacent style games. They're obviously big fans of that competitive fighting scene, and so they've kind of uh, abstracted that into a board game where you have uh, acrylic standees for all the different characters. You've got like what represents a two dimensional board where you're going to be fighting each other, effect effectively just literally fighting and playing cards to try to defeat your opponent. And very yeah. simple. And in fact, a lot of characters, meaning 20 characters. Yeah, it's uh, a at lot. least that's what was listed on the campaign. A lot of them with massive, how many, 500 and some cards? Yeah, it's a ton in, of in cards. In total or something like that. Uh, so they each have decks. They have all these beautiful tuck boxes for all of them. If you like the artwork and if you're a fan of Guilty Gear, and it yeah. looks like a lot of people have backed already. I think it was up near 200,000. Oh yeah, 000. I mean, this, I think a lot of people are big fans of that Exceed system. And they've done Blaze Blue already, which was another Really cool fighting game. I really like those Japanese fighting games. I don't know if that yeah. was obvious. I'm awful at that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the best, but they're a lot of fun. So uh, definitely take take a look at that one. It, it doesn't really need our help. It's already got a huge following. No, but it's, it's doing just fine. It's worth shouting that out. And this next one's also doing just fine, but I, it caught my eye last week, and I told Ryan about it. I was like, hey, we should talk about this oh, one. Oh, yeah. And it's a dexterity game. It's called Epic Laser... No, Tiny Laser Heist. Tiny Laser Heist. Not Tiny Epic. It's... Yeah, tiny, you're thinking tiny laser up, yes. heist. And this is a dexterity game, but not just a dexterity game, because it sounds like you're going to be doing some negotiating with the other people in your, I guess, crew, if you will, to steal things out of this board space. And by board space, I mean there's a board, but there's this like built structure around it. It kind of looks like, you know, if you broke into a museum and there was glass <laughs> surrounding a treasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's yeah. not glass surrounding this, but you're using these little sticks with tiny hands, hands. Tiny hands. Yeah, to with other people. So Ryan and I would each have a hand, and we're reaching in there from different angles to lift locks and re re remove locks in order to, I think, steal. ultimately steal a diamond or deal, steal all sorts of different things. The trick, and this is the cool thing I thought there was going on, is they've got these elastic cords that go between in the structure that represent like yeah. the lasers that would be going around. So it has a really cool table presence. Um, and I don't know how it works. I do want to get this on the table well, to the, the see way if it works set, as well. And the way you it, set those looks pretty cool. Like you can raise or lower the different sides of the bands and it makes like diagonals and yeah, it's it, cool. But it, in the videos anyway, they show people barely touching them and these things snapping uh -huh. and knocking stuff over. Obviously that's not a good thing, but the other part of the game is at the beginning you're like, okay, I'm the heist leader. I forget what they call that, but the mastermind behind the heist. And I think they even have this little mask. I don't yeah. know if I'd wear the mask personally, like in mixed company, but... Uh, it's just for fun. It is just for fun. That person is in charge of trying to like get a crew together. So there's like a little conversation at the table like, hey, who wants, me to, who wants to help me with this? Here's how much your cut would be. Yeah. There's some negotiation there. So then those people try to perform that heist. And then it kind of goes around the table and does that, I assume, multiple times. I mean, it definitely has a table presence. Yeah, it this thing is... will demo like insane at a convention. Well, it's just one of those games where it gets everybody up and standing around. It almost has like, almost not really that Jenga, but that feeling of like, when you fail and everybody at the table yeah. goes, ah, uh, we played Nikojima uh, yes. on the channel. It does have a little bit of those vibes of like when you have to cooperate well, with somebody. Well, just get two players so, using one hand yeah, each to uh -huh. do something very precarious. Yes, it has, it gave me those sorts of vibes as well. But anyway, that's Tiny? Yeah. No, not no, Tiny. No, 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 it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Tiny, tiny Laser Heist. Laser Heist. I keep Sorry. wanting to say Tiny Epic every single time. It's not, it's it's no there. epic. I mean, I'm sure it's an epic experience, yeah. but it's not in the name. That's very cool. Uh, all right, I'm going to go on to the next one I wanted to talk about, and this is Farms Race. 
This is a very interesting game, not in my normal wheelhouse, but I, I appreciate what they're doing here. This is kind of a parody game. They're kind of, they're, they're really kind of making fun of Euro games, especially like resource collection Euro games, like Catan it's or all those. very Catan-esque. Yeah, or all those like Mediterranean games. And they kind of make, poke a little bit of fun at those games and saying like, yeah, those games are fun and everything, but like, what if you got to like fight each other? <laughs> like, where's all the conflict? So they're like, the whole premise is like, we're gonna take your boring little Euro game and we're going to inject fighting and nuclear weapons and all just all this crazy stuff in the form of parody, obviously. So like a lot of the cards that you see, a lot of the artwork is done in a very cartoony, I mean, stylized I hope, I vibe. I hope it's parody. I hope they're not encouraging well, nuclear it, war it with is, farms. Well, it is. They actually got into a little trouble. So this campaign was supposed to come out a while ago, but it had to get delayed because they had a wingspan parody. Oh, this, the, is this, is the, this is that campaign. This is that campaign. So they did. They got in a little hot hopefully, water with that. Hopefully, their, we don't have to copyright strike this no, video. I'm, just talking about. I think about they, it. they obviously came to some kind of re resolution. Um, okay. And that's no longer there. But they did have like a, a, a parody pack. I don't think Wingspan is part of it anymore. <laughs> where you could interject a little bit more PvP into your favorite Euro games. I like it. I mean, I don't know if it's a, like how much fun I'll have like with longevity. But it's definitely one of those unique games. Like, hey, you've played a lot of Catan. Like, let's do something a little silly and a little fun and like you know, play with that format a little bit and, and what's obviously a satirical parody style. Yeah, it does seem like it's all in good fun, so. Uh. Yeah, so, yeah, it does seem so. So, uh, those are all running right now. Um, we've got two that we want to talk about that are coming up, uh, but we're bringing in another special guest, or I should say guests. Guests. Plural, to talk about one of those, and this is Kevin and Melissa Delp. You might recognize them from Tantrum House. Hey, I'm Kevin. And I'm Melissa. We wanted to highlight the Kickstarter coming from Busy e Games on August 29th, Colossal Cat in the Box. Now, we both enjoy the regular, well, the deluxe Cat in the Box <laughs> that Busy e has already published. It's a nice compact box for the trick-taking game with a twist. Yeah, trick-taking with a twist. Since your cards don't have colors. It you blew my mind the yeah. first time I played this. You determine the color when you play the card. And crazy. It is pretty crazy. And now they're coming with the colossal version, which has the base game stuff in it, but more. Yes. So it's bigger, and the tokens, the cute little tokens, are about four times bigger <laughs> than the original one. So <laughs> nice and chunky. We got a chance to play a prototype of it a few weeks ago. Yeah. And it was really satisfying putting those tokens out on the board. The board is slightly different now. Not only is it bigger, but the configurations are a little bit different because the new version comes with two expansions. Yeah, so there's string theory and Doppler effect. And if you've played the regular game, uh, you know you're sort of trying to get your cards in, or your tokens in certain lines mm -hmm. and certain configurations. Well, this sort of like changes how that works, these, these two expansions. Yeah, with string theory, there's... Um, some of the spaces aren't numbers. There are these little strings that connect in different ways. And if you connect to, next to one of those strings, now you're connected to those other spaces. So there are more ways to make connections on that board. I like Doppler effect because there's actually some of the spaces have two, actually all the spaces have two numbers. And you can sort of like, ah, oh, this one's a five or it's a six, <laughs> things like that. Yeah, it gives you a little bit more flexibility with mm -hmm. where you put your tokens and I think it reduces the paradoxes a little bit. So you're more likely to actually finish the round than have someone spiral into paradox. And one more thing we gotta mention. Mm, that cat, right? Yes, the cat figurine. It's pretty awesome. I don't know, what is it, like that big or so? Yeah. It is weighty and chunky and feels really good thumping it down onto the table. So check out Bezier Games' Colossal Cat in the Box. Yeah, so our last one that we want to talk yep. about is Harvest. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I think I played Harvest back in 2017. You might, if you were around back then, if you might have. I mean, hopefully, if you're watching this video, you were around <laughs> back then. <laughs> around, although maybe not gaming we might have some then. really young viewers. I well, don't I, know. I, yeah, I do think it's kind of strange. I talk about games like, oh, yeah, you didn't play Harvest? It came out in 2017. Like, I started gaming in 2020. And well, it's like, oh, okay. So a lot of people did miss some of those like early 
Tens games. Plus, plus, this one was admittedly under the radar back then. This one came from uh, Tasty Minstrel Games. Yeah, TNG. Uh, same designer, uh, but at the same time, it didn't take off as much as they'd liked it to have. Um, so that designer was shopping it around a little bit. Um, Keymaster picked it up. And this is coming to Kickstarter on the 29th of yeah. August. And with a whole this new... Week. and So the way they approached this was they wanted to find a new home, a new publisher for this game. Uh, but then the more they talked about it, the yeah. more they decided to kind of like change it, tweak it. And really, I don't think they built a completely new game from the ground up, but it sounds like it's largely a new game. They well, even brought Seth Jaffe back in for development, who helped who develop the, TMG, the original yeah. game at TMG. Well, they brought it more in line with like what Keymaster is doing, and yeah. especially the way the game looks. Well, yeah. I mean, they really did a great job with the art and graphic design. I mean, it's very appealing, just, just eye-catching. Yeah, it looks... We haven't seen too much of it. They haven't really shown too no, much there's, of it. No, there's definitely images up that you can find online, though. Um, but yeah, check that out. It's going to be launching on August 29th. Keymaster always does an incredibly great job production-wise. Yeah. And, you know, all of their games, they, they, they rarely ever miss with, like, the games that they're putting out. No, so. that, I mean, they've had a huge line of successes, so yeah. yeah. So anyway, that is what's happening in crowdfunding yeah. this week, next week, last week, all the weeks surrounding yeah, running, us. coming, going, all of that, all the above. We'll be back next week. Although we keep saying this, there's bound to be a week where it's going to be super light. And I think... Do we need to say it every week? Like, we'll be... No, well, I can tell you, based on the content we're creating in September, it's probably not going to be anytime soon. No, September looks like it's going to be a big month. But later this year, we'll see how yeah, it maybe, goes. Maybe, who knows. We'll Either way, come week. back here next week at this time. If we don't have a video, well, maybe we'll have some other video. Watch, watch all of our videos between then and now. <laughs> yeah. Do whatever you want. Anyway, until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. Bye.